Full disclosure, I am a community moderator for First Contact Entertainment, so please take the following with a pinch of salt if you want. With that out of the way, let's get right into it. Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and today I want to talk about Firewall Ultra. Now yesterday patch 1.10 dropped and I streamed the game for about 5 hours in total over 2 streams and guess what? I had a blast and it got me thinking about Firewall Ultra in a big picture kind of a way. Thinking about how this is Sony's flagship PSVR 2 shooter, how it's the only AAA level multiplayer shooter on the platform and will likely remain its only one for some time, and thinking about appreciating what I have in front of me. The game has had a rough launch period, there is no denying that. I've gone into detail myself on the issues that it has, but as time is going on and as First Contact Entertainment continue to update the game almost every week, I feel like it's starting to take shape and it's becoming the game that I wanted it to be. There's still more updates needed and balances to be tweaked, but overall I am at the point now where I can boot up Firewall Ultra and know that I'm going to have a good time. When I hit start, I'm straight into the main menu in seconds thanks to the latest patch that skips the splash screens. Once my teammate join me, I hit the search button and in a few moments I'm already getting matched up with enemy players. Again, thanks to the latest patch which has sped up that process significantly. Now of course, it's not perfect, you might still be waiting a bit longer than you'd like, but now that feels like it's not the game's fault anymore and more of a player population issue when it happens. And player populations is always going to be an issue for PSVR 2 games as long as Sony keeps acting like the headset doesn't exist. I can almost guarantee you the percentage of PS5 owners who do not even know that Firewall Ultra exists is in the high 90s. So anyway, after I find an enemy squad, I'm loaded into one of eight maps in mere seconds thanks to the SSD technology. Not just any maps either, by the way, but some of the best designed maps I've played in first-person shooter games. They're filled with loads of flanking routes, high-risk bottlenecks, and multiple routes to an objective. And each of these maps are so bristling with details, little things that I notice that I'm often losing focus on what I'm doing just so I can stop and stare at them. Maybe it's a vent throwing out warm air that gives off that kind of wavy mirage effect. Maybe it's just a bunch of flies buzzing around a dumpster. A palm tree on a map that's on fire and like spitting out flaming embers that just drift along on the breeze. Or a corridor filled with dense steam illuminated by a reddish glow that makes the air feel really thick. These maps and these details are further brought to life by Firewall Ultra's impressive lighting system. I can be walking through the gauntlet map with my weapon raised and then I walk through a shaft of light that's just bleeding through a gap in a window or the roof or something and admiring the way it realistically flows along the side of my weapon and hands as I'm walking through it. The darkness added to some of these maps is a complaint for some but I believe it adds new levels of tactical decision making and choices. Stealth becomes much more viable and cool new additions like night vision goggles and flashlights serve an important purpose now. Forgetting the fact that all 8 players can cast real time shadows simultaneously with these flashlights which by itself is something you simply aren't seeing on any other PSV or 2 multiplayer title and I don't know if you ever will. Speaking of forgetting, the two most requested features from the original Firewall Zero Hour game are here in Ultra and they go completely overlooked in my opinion, even by myself. Dedicated servers are a huge plus. To this day in Zero Hour, if the host drops out, the game just ends and you're all kicked back to the main menu and it was a massive headache. That is not an issue in Firewall Ultra, neither is having to worry about someone from the South Pole having the host and then lagging the match up for everybody else. It's a massive improvement that is completely underappreciated now that we have it. Just like the best of three round structure that we now have, no longer is it one round and back to the lobby, it's best of three and I cannot tell you how many times I've heard people clambering for Firewall Ultra to introduce a best of three structure and now that we have it, now that it's there, it's just crickets, nobody seems to acknowledge it at all. Ultra also introduced small tweaks to the established formula that I find have added a lot. So for example, the ability to crawl when you're downed now has made it so that not only do I have a better chance of surviving when I'm downed, but I also have to keep in mind that the enemy can move around when they're down too. Now if I sit and watch them, maybe they'll lead me to some teammates, but if I'm not paying attention, maybe they'll just get away. 
Similarly, another layer of depth was added to the cameras now that you can temporarily disable them when you know an enemy is watching you through them. Eye tracking has been a source of frustration due to some of the ways it is utilized in Ultra, but not enough is said about when it's used well. Negating flashbangs by closing your eyes in real life as they detonate and using the sentinel ability to highlight an enemy on the cameras when you're dead simply by staring at them with your eyes are some really nice uses of that feature, the latter allowing people to contribute even if they don't voice chat. In my opinion, these are just two great uses of eye tracking that we don't talk about enough. Now my biggest complaint with Ultra was the ADS shooting mechanic and how unfair it was to come up against that as someone who didn't use it because I simply didn't like using it. But with patch 1.10, that issue has been significantly improved. Now I feel like I'm on a more level playing field and I'm much more excited to boot up the game because I feel like I can enjoy what it is much more. Now you might think I'm being overly positive about Firewall Ultra, but most of the stuff I've said is just factually correct and the subjective stuff is just my opinion. There's plenty of issues left for First Contact Entertainment to address. That's also true. And in my last video, I went over those in detail. I was critical. But I did end that last video on a hopeful note. I believed that with some time, Ultra can become the game we want. And now that update 1.10 has arrived a week after I made that video, it has reinforced that belief. If the next patches improves grenade throwing and eases off on the grind, then nearly all of my issues are gone and we'll be looking at one of the PSVR 2's best games and a game worth buying the headset for, just like Firewall Zero Hour was. That is it for this video, lads and ladies. Thank you very much for watching, but also thank you to Decepticon for letting me use his music in all of my videos. You can check him out in the description below. Also, let me thank my channel members whose names are on the screen as we speak for their continued support. They are the following. Muzz, Deadeye Dan, Chopped PPE, No One Knows, Move Master Mick, Deej the Pumpkin Patch Kid, Pete Hawkins, Crumb, Superfly AF, Edify Till I Die, Mr. 777, Lone Wolf Vior, Germ Warfare, AC6 The Mad Hatter, Durbin Brown, Prophecy 777, Amanda Clark, Nert Boglin, Jason Ewan, Roy Schwartz, Jeremiah, and Infinity Lefty. Thank you very much, all of you, for that support. It is greatly appreciated. If you want to have your name added to that list, you can hit the join button below this video as well for extra perks on the channel also. And with that, I will end the video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Please stay nice and moist.